There is something quite intriguing about this gospel passage that we have for this Feast of Trinity Sunday. We notice that this is the moment in which Jesus is commissioning his disciples not only to go out in the world, but he's handing over to them the entire project of salvation history that God had in mind from the very beginning that we heard about in the book of Deuteronomy today, in which God saved the people through the Red Sea and he elected them as his chosen people. Those words that we sang in the song today. He's handing everything over to them that he won by his death on the cross. And yet, taking a closer look at these disciples, we first of all hear that they're defined by the term the 11, which means in fact that they're one short because of Judas's betrayal. And we all know that the rest of the disciples also had a checkered history with regard to following Jesus, all except John, who was at the foot of the cross with Mary. Peter even denied him, the chief of the apostles, and the rest of them took off and abandoned him. And yet it's to these that he entrusts the project of salvation history for the rest of the world. And we also notice that as they see him after his resurrection and they encounter the risen Lord, we hear in the gospel, and yet they still doubted. Here they were as Thomas was able to put his hands in the side of Jesus and his fingers in the nail marks in his hands. They still doubted. And so these 11, these disciples, who in fact are going to be in charge of the entire project of saving the world, are very weak men, limited people, people who are very poor in their abilities. It's strange that Jesus would seed over to them the entire project of salvation history. But we get another glimpse of what's going on here in that last sentence of the gospel. Jesus says to them, behold, I'm with you always and to the end of the age. And as we heard in the second reading, we call God our Father, we're the heirs of the kingdom. And an heir in a family doesn't do anything to deserve the inheritance. It's just the fact that he is a son and daughter in the family. Jesus says, we belong to the family of God. And that is why he's with us to the end of the age. We will not be abandoned. He takes us in our weakness and fills it up with his grace in order to take on the challenges in life. That should give great hope to the church. For we know at times we have had some very weak leaders in the history of the church. And yet we continue because the Lord has not abandoned us. We also know in our own lives that when we come up against a struggle, maybe because of health, a change of employment, maybe when a couple gets married and they see the daunting challenges of bringing a family into the world, or those times in which we also are asked to do something that's so very difficult, or maybe even try to overcome a temptation, we find that it's so very hard and we are weak. But it's precisely in the moment of our weakness that we recognize that Jesus is with us. He has not abandoned us. And the more we keep that in mind, the greater the likelihood that the challenge that we face will be overcome simply because we are heirs to the kingdom. We are sons and daughters of the fa Father. He will not abandon us. He will stay with us. And so today, as you look at the challenges in life that you have, whatever it may be, your health, finances, relationships with other people, know that as daunting as those challenges are and how weak we all are, we can always count on the fact that Jesus promises good. 
as he says to us once again, not to worry, I am with you to the end of the age.